Hey, what's up you guys? It's Aisha and I'm back with another video. This video is going to be part two to my previous video. In the previous video, I talked about my experience with the recovery house, I gave you guys all the details about the recovery house, the nurses, everything like that. So this video, I want to try to cover everything else. So that's going to include my pre-op, post-op, and my flight back. So if you are returning to my channel, welcome back. If you are new here, welcome. And as you may or may not know, I recently had plastic surgery in the Dominican Republic and I'm just talking about my time there. Um, I'll post a card on the screen somewhere that will link my previous videos if you want to go back and watch them. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the video. So let's start with the day before surgery. So my surgery was on a Monday. So Sunday I had to go to the clinic and have my labs done, um, see the cardiologist, get an x-ray. Also I had to get my COVID test done. So when I first got to the clinic, I saw the cardiologist and he took my height my weight he did some kind of cardiology exam where he put these little things on you and i guess it tells him how your blood is flowing through your body how your heart is beating and all i don't know whatever test he does he does after that he is going to send you to x-ray and they're going to take an x-ray of your lungs to make sure they are functioning properly at full capacity to make sure you're not going to have any troubles with breathing on your own while you're under anesthesia. So after you finish in the clinic, you are going to go to another lab where they will do your uh, COVID test. It's around the corner from the clinic. After that, you are going to go to another lab and they are going to dry your blood and test it for everything that they need to test it for to make sure that you are good for surgery you won't get those results back they will send them to your doctor if there's anything that comes up in those results your doctor will call you before your scheduled surgery time to let you know like hey we have this concern and we need you to do this this that or whatever if you don't hear anything back from them i will say that's a good thing i didn't hear any back anything back from my doctor before surgery so I'm guessing everything was good oh and this whole process guys took about maybe two to two and a half hours because like i said i was doing this on a sunday so it was barely anyone there so it was kind of like in and out type of thing well the day of surgery i got to the clinic at about 6 30 in the morning um they tell every girl that's having surgery on that day to come there at six in the morning so there's no like you're gonna have surgery at four o'clock so show up at two no it's everybody come at six in the morning and you will wait there all day long until you have surgery um a lot of women go there they want to be the first one to have surgery so that they're not waiting that long for me it didn't really matter um i did not want to be last but i didn't necessarily have to be first but it was just my luck that I ended up being the last person to have surgery that day. Anyway, like I was saying, you're going to get there about 6 or 6.30 in the morning. There's going to be a few girls there waiting to have surgery that day. And mind you, um, there are other doctors that operate out of the same clinic. So there may be girls there waiting on the same doctor as you or waiting on other doctors. There may be uh, post-op or pre-op girls, whatever there'll be girls there waiting and as the day goes on as it gets later in the morning you'll notice that more and more women will start to show up and the waiting area will be completely packed like there will be no seats left and there will be people standing up so once you get there you're going to check in with the clinic staff you're going to let them know your name and all that good stuff and what doctor you're seeing they're going to pull up some paperwork give it to you have you fill it out and bring it back to them um after that they're going to tell you that you can wait in the lobby until they get a room ready for you a hospital room ready for you I said in my previous video you can't go there and expect the customer service to be 100% A1 like you would expect in the United States. Um, the clinic staff, they are not the nicest. They are going to help you, but it's kind of like they're going to help you on their time. Like they will tell you, go sit down and wait and we'll get to you. 
like that's just how it is over there um they they're going to help you you may have to ask them two times or three times um but they're going to help you and also keep in mind that the clinic staff is separate from dr g's staff dr g's staff like i said before they were great they were very helpful they kind of their customer service reminded me of customer service here in the states but the clinic staff yeah no but i do understand that they are busy they are slim packed they see hundreds of girls a day and you know it is what it is well, while i was waiting um dr g called me down to his office to do my pre-op exam since my surgery was on a monday my pre-op was the same day as the surgery if you have your surgery any other day of the week your pre-op is probably going to be the day before your surgery except monday you'll have pre-op and surgery on the same day so once i went down there i met with dr g he um went over everything that i said i wanted to have done he let me know what he can do what he can't do he marked me up for surgery and sent me on my way tell me i will see you later on in the operating room dr g is very pleasant very welcoming um he answered any questions that i had he made sure that i felt comfortable with the procedure and confident in his abilities so even though the pre-op appointment was pretty quick, I left there feeling like I had been thoroughly explained everything that was going to occur. Um, I didn't leave out there with questions still in my head. Your pre-op appointment is going to be quick. It's going to be probably 10 minutes max, unless you have some kind of other issues or whatever else going on your pre-op appointment is probably going to be about 10 minutes max so you have to remember that he is also on the same day performing surgeries he is doing post-op appointments and he is doing pre-op appointments so he doesn't have 30 minutes to an hour to dedicate to every pre-op or post-op appointment so it is going to be pretty quick but it's going to be thorough and you won't leave your appointment feeling like you were rushed through if that makes sense after my pre-op i went back to the waiting room um i waited there for a couple more hours my overnight nurse showed up her name is bruna she is awesome like she is amazing um she came highly recommended so i was so happy that i was able to book her because i kind of booked her i don't want to say at the last minute but for her because she is so popular and she has such good reviews for her i think i booked kind of at the last minute bruna showed up at about 10 30 in the morning which i was surprised i don't know why i was expecting her to come a little bit later on but she showed up about 10 30 in the morning um we talked in the lobby for a long time she made me feel even more comfortable with the doctor with the center with the surgery with everything um she was telling me you know don't worry everything's gonna be okay which i wasn't worried anyway because i was i'm i was confident in dr g so it was just more reassuring to have her telling me these things and knowing that she came so highly recommended which leads me to my next thing because a lot of ladies ask is it necessary to hire an overnight nurse and i will say it is absolutely necessary to hire an overnight nurse you need somebody that's going to be able to advocate for you who speaks the language because after surgery you're going to be in your bed you're not going to be able to do pretty much anything for yourself and you're going to want somebody there that's going to be able to communicate with the clinic staff with the clinic nurses to let them know when you need something bruna was able to communicate with them that i was in pain and i needed some stronger pain medicine and so they came in and gave me some um some kind of pain medicine in my IV. but had i not had her there i would not have been able to communicate that with them and it's not like the hospital in the states where a nurse is coming in every hour or every two hours to check on you to take your vitals to make sure you're taking your medicine um when i stayed there overnight i think a nurse came in 
maybe twice once in the night and then once the next morning so you definitely want to have your overnight nurse there with you so for me yes that's a definite yes you need to have an overnight nurse another good thing about having an overnight nurse is the morning after your surgery you're going to have to go to the pharmacy and pay for your medicine and pick up your medicine um there are girls who for some reason they didn't hire an overnight nurse or what but they are the day after surgery having to go stand in line at a pharmacy and nobody over there is going to look at you and feel sorry for you they're going to look at you like it's normal the day after surgery for you to be waiting in line at a pharmacy for your medicine and for me that was a no it was a no the morning after my surgery um bruna told me how much the medicine was going to cost i gave her the money she went to the pharmacy for me picked up my medicine and bought it back i didn't have to do anything and on top of that, um, I think that sometimes the pharmacies there may charge Americans more than what the medicine actually costs. And that's just a theory of mine. I don't know that to be true. It is not a fact. That is just a theory of mine. Um, because Bruna told me my medicine would cost 120 USD so that's what i gave her she went she got the medicine she was good but when i got back to my recovery house and i was talking to girls they had paid 180 they had paid 200 220 and one had even paid 250. now mind you we all have different doctors and i don't know if everyone has the exact same medication but for the most part we kind of have similar medications if not the same so it seemed like i paid the least amount of money not saying that those girls didn't have an overnight nurse because I know some of them did I just I don't know I don't know that's just a theory of mine so anyway back to what I was saying so at around 4 30 or so they came and told me that they had a room ready for me so yeah I have been at the clinic since 6 30 just chilling in the lobby area did not or in the waiting area did not get a um room until about 4 30 in the afternoon um so i got in the room changed into my hospital gown hospital socks um and about an hour later at around 5 30 they came and gave me the infamous blue pill so if you've heard anything about plastic surgery in dominican republic then you have heard about this infamous blue pill from my understanding the pill is to basically calm your nerves so i guess it's like an anxiety medication it's supposed to make you relaxed and stress-free and just floating on cloud nine some people take this pill and say they don't feel anything some people take it and say they were knocked out um i did not feel anything after i took it personally i was waiting for it to kick in i was like oh let me see what this little blue pill is gonna do that i keep hearing about but i i don't remember feeling anything from the blue pill um which i'm not surprised about because from my experience there i don't feel like dominican republic is big on giving high dosages of medication because the pain medicine there was weak so i'm sure whatever that little blue pill is was probably weak too so yeah i took the blue pill around 5 30 around 6 30 they came and got me for surgery they put me in a wheelchair wheeled me to the or um i met the anesthesiologist she put an IV in the back of my hand and i remember telling her that it was hurting once they started putting the medicine or putting the uh, anesthesia through the IV. i remember telling her like ouch ouch it's hurting the next thing i remember after that is waking up back in my hospital room surgery was done i woke up i think it was about 10 or 10 30 at night um my nurse bruna she was there when i woke up she's like oh how are you feeling are you okay so i told her about the pain that i was in she was able to give me some more pain medication she just made sure that i was comfortable throughout the whole night if i needed the bed raised or the pillow tucked a different way or my legs propped up a different way if i needed some water if i needed 
her to get anything out of my bag or whatever I needed she was there to do it like she was she was a one like for real so the next morning after surgery when you wake up they're going to bring you breakfast they're going to um like I said you're going to get your medication you're going to start taking your medication and then after that you are going to get your first massage and your faha Dr. G does not put you in a faha right after surgery. When you wake up from surgery, you'll be in a binder, which is like a stretchy white band with um, Velcro around it. That's kind of like cinching you in. You will not wake up in a faha. So they'll wheel you down to the room where you'll get your first post-op massage. Um... You'll hear a lot of women saying that it hurts really, really bad. And I'm not going to lie, you know, you are going to experience some discomfort, some pain. It, you just had surgery 12 hours ago. And now they're squeezing and rubbing and poking and all this stuff trying to get some of that fluid up out of your body. Yeah, I have a high pain tolerance. So I did feel a little discomfort and a little bit of pain, but it wasn't as bad as... I thought it was going to be but you will hear some women say like I passed out and I just couldn't take it you'll hear them screaming you'll hear them crying um but I think if you just relax and prepare yourself for what's about to happen then you should be okay and after that massage they're going to give you your faha um your faha your stage one faha it's going to be tight it's going to be uncomfortable because it is a compression garment but the stage one faha is the lowest compression that you can get and that one is still tight and uncomfortable and they're going to put pads in it to make it even more tight just to keep you compressed and to help with the swelling so you'll be in your stage one faha for a week or so when I went back for my first post-op appointment, it was exactly a week from surgery. So when you go back for your post-op appointment, you're going to see um, Dr. Santos or Dr. Santana. I think I saw, I think I saw Dr. Santos. She handles a lot of the post-op appointments for him um, because, like I said, he's busy doing surgeries and pre-op and whatever else. But he will come in at some point during your post-op appointment at my first post-op appointment she uh, took off my dressings the dressings that were covering my tummy tuck scar she took those off she cleaned it out real good and then she applied new dressings on it she looked at my drain to make sure that it was draining properly you know nothing looked like it was getting infected she just made sure that everything was the way it was supposed to be. Um, she asked me, was I having any kind of discomfort? Um, was anything, you know, was everything okay at the recovery house? Do the nurses know how to put on the faha? Just making sure that everything was good. After that, she's going to tell you that you can go ahead and move on to your stage two faha. Your stage two faha, you can either buy it from them or you can buy it from one of the numerous faha stores in Santo Domingo. I chose to buy mine from Alexander Faha. So after Dr. Santos is finished and you want to see Dr. G, you might have to wait a few minutes, an hour or so, I don't know, until he's able to get a break and come in and see you again. That appointment with him is going to be very quick. He's going to look at you to make sure you look okay, to make sure everything is healing okay. And then he's going to tell you, I'll see you at your second post-op appointment. Go ahead and move on to your stage two. So I bought my stage two from Alexander Faha in Santo Domingo. And um, when I walked in, I told the lady that I'm looking for a stage two faha um the only thing she did was take her hand and put it around my thigh and she said you need extra small and i'm like hold on extra small like that's gonna be way too tight she's like no mommy no mommy no you need extra small you need mucho compressions um, all right well let's try on this extra small so we tried it on and lo and behold they were able to get me into that extra small and so that's what i went home in that was my stage two 
that's what I wore for the rest of the time in the DR and after I got back home. And let me tell y'all, when you are a week post-op, that stage two garment is no joke. Like, oof. Like, you wanted to cry every time it was time to put that thing on. Like, I would ask the ladies at the recovery house, oh, can I just be out of the garment for just 30 minutes, for an hour? And they would look at me with such disgust, like, no, you don't need to be out of it. And if they did let me be out of it, they would tell me only 30 minutes, only 30 minutes. And they would come back in like, okay, mommy, we got to put your garment back on. And it's, it's like, you just want to cry because this thing is so tight and you are in so much pain. And when they put it on, they have to tug at it and tug at it. And they have stuff stuffed in there. And it's just, whew, it's no bueno. But once you're swelling starts to subside um as the weeks go on you'll find that it's easier to get into your stage two faha my second post-op appointment was at 11 days post-op um i went back i saw dr santos again she looked at me she said everything looked good and again she took my dressing off of my tummy tuck scar cleaned it off real good and put a new dressing on there she also removed my drain a lot of ladies ask does it hurt when they remove your drain and i wouldn't say it hurts but it feels weird the only part that might hurt a little bit is when it actually comes out of the actual hole because by this time it's you're almost two weeks post-op so you started to heal around the um around the drain tube and you might have actually started to scab up around the drain tube and that's the part that they're pulling out so that part it was just like a little sting um but other than that it just felt weird because the drain goes in you and then it goes all the way around you so when they're pulling it out you can just feel the drain coming from all the way around you really quickly and then a little sting at the end so it does feel awkward it feels weird not so much painful though it's quick it's like two seconds literally also at your second post-op appointment they are going to give you your clearance letter so that you can fly home. That's the letter that you're going to give to the airline, just letting them know that you have been cleared from surgery, that you have been cleared to fly back home, you are not a health risk, and they can go ahead and issue you a boarding pass. I've heard some ladies say that their airline did not ask them for anything and they don't think you really need it which may be true but when i went to the american airlines counter they asked me for it and i had to supply it to them and the man that i supplied it to had to supply it to his manager so i would say it's better to be safe than sorry so just get the clearance letter stay the recommended amount of days that your doctor wants you to stay so that you can get the clearance letter for example if your doctor says for tummy tucks you need to stay in the dr for 12 days but you decide you're only going to stay for eight days they're probably not going to give you the clearance letter because you haven't stayed the recommended amount of time which is fine that's on you that's your decision you do what you want but you just gotta hope that the airline does not ask you for that letter like i said they did ask for mine so just putting that out there and I did have wheelchair assistance in the airport because you don't want to be walking long distances with your suitcase, your bags, whatever, right after surgery. It's just more convenient to get the wheelchair assistance. I would 100% recommend that you do that after surgery. As far as the plane ride back to the United States, um, Dr. G will tell you not to wear your stage 2 because the air pressure in the cabin will cause your body to swell up sometimes. So he's going to tell you to travel in your stage one. Do not put any um, boards, foams, pads, nothing in there while you're on the plane. Just put on the stage one garment and nothing else. He's also going to tell you 
to wear your compression socks just to make sure that your blood is flowing the way it's supposed to flow through your legs because again the air pressure the cabin pressure can affect and you don't want to run the risk of developing any blood clots or anything like that so he will tell you to wear your compression socks on the plane and also he'll tell you not to wear flip-flops or sliding shoes he wants you to wear sneakers that lace up tight and he wants you to get up and walk at least two times on your flight just to make sure blood is circulating throughout your legs your feet and your body the way it's supposed to be while you are on your flight back home a lot of people ask me did i get a first class seat on my flight back to the states so that i could have more space um no i didn't i thought about it and i almost did because I had heard so many people saying that they did, but I also heard people saying that they had regular seats and that they were fine. So I booked a regular seat and I told myself if I needed to upgrade it, then I will upgrade it. But my regular seat was just fine. So do I think you need to upgrade to a first class seat it is absolutely not necessary you know if that's just something that you would just prefer and you have the money to spend on it and you just want to do it then by all means sis go ahead and do it but is it necessary nah on both legs of my flight there was no one sitting on my row so had the whole row of seats to myself but even if i did not have the whole row of seats to myself i would have been fine sitting in a regular seat um the only thing i did was i got up I think twice maybe two or three times i walked to the bathroom walk back just to make sure i'm not getting too sedentary to make sure my blood is flowing but sis you don't need no first class seat like you'll be fine oh and i forgot to mention um you do have to have a COVID test done within three days of flying back to the united states that is a requirement that's not like the clearance letter where they may ask for it, they may not. You have to have it and you have to supply it to the airline before they will give you a boarding pass. If you have not had a COVID test done, you will not be able to board your plane from DR to come back to the States, from any country to come back into the States. So I did my COVID test two days before I left DR. My driver junior took me to a rapid COVID testing site um they did my covid test and i got the results back in about 45 minutes they gave me the results in the envelope they were negative thank god that's the envelope you'll give to the airline when you get there so that you can board your flight but yeah my plane ride was good my time in dr was excellent everything went as planned everything went just how i expected it to go so i don't have any major complaints about that would i do it again if I had to do it all over again, yes, I would do the same exact thing again. And I know I told you guys in a previous video that I do want to eventually get my boobs done. And I also stated that I was hoping to be a one and done patient as far as BBL and liposuction. But y'all, that has changed because your girl is ready for a round two. Like, Dr. G snatched me. But I just need that extra little snatch. So I think when I get my boobs done, I'm going to get a round two of liposuction and maybe BBL. Like my BBL, I like it. My butt looks nice and plump. It has a nice shape and it looks natural. I like it. Um, so I'm on the fence about whether or not I'm going to do another BBL. But definitely I'm going to do another round of liposuction. Um, because in my opinion, when you do a tummy tuck and lipo it's but it's not but so much lipo they can do in the lower abdomen part because you did have a, you know an incision down there and they don't want to do too much that's just my opinion so i think i can get a little bit more lipo down there and your girl just want that extra snatch okay so round to me please um y'all drop some doctor names below who would you recommend for round two for liposuction possible bbl who would you recommend for breasts like i've been doing my research and i found a couple people um i love dr g i don't know if i'm going to go back to him for my round two round one my focus was on the tummy tuck and dr g came through with the tummy tuck my scar 
is amazing. I mean, he came through everything. My BBL is amazing. My lipo is amazing. Yeah, so really don't have anything bad to say about Dr. G. But I am on the hunt to find a doctor for my round two. So y'all let me know. Let me know what y'all think. Who y'all think I should go to? I'm thinking I'll probably end up back in the DR, but Miami is not off limits either. So let me know. DR doctors, Miami doctors, y'all let me know. That was my trip to the DR. Everything went smooth. Everything, you know, just it went as planned. And that's because one, I did my research, a ton of it. And two, I planned everything. You need to plan and you need to research. Those are the two most important things you can do if you are planning to have surgery in Dominican Republic. Make sure you have a plan for everything, your transportation, where you're staying, what time is your transportation gonna come get you? What time are they gonna drop you off? What kind of food does the recovery house have? Um, what kind of weight should I expect at the clinic? You know, just, <sighs> Do your research, do as much research as you can. And based on your research, plan as best as you can. Like don't go down there and leave anything up in the air. Like have a plan for everything. And I understand like sometimes stuff happens and plans change, but just try to have a plan A, a plan B, and even a plan C in case something goes wrong. But hopefully it won't, so. We're going to bank on our plan A. But that is it, you guys. That was my surgery journey in DR. Like I said, I had a very pleasant experience. I would do it again. I would recommend Dr. G to anybody who is looking at give, getting a tummy tuck and BBL. Um, I have no complaints about him. So you guys let me know if you have any more questions. Please leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And also follow me on Snapchat and Instagram. I am trying to get better with posting y'all. Life is just so busy for me. And sometimes posting is the last thing on my mind. But I'm trying to get better with that. Until next time. Love you guys. See you later.